the cultivator Wang Jianji died, and his divine soul was possessed in a foreign land. Like the spring and autumn period and the warring states period, various countries vied for hegemony, foreign invasions, and various forces mixed together, competing for the central plains. As the son of a playboy from a border feudal state, he not only had to face the separatist alliance of eastern feudal lords, but also beware of the situation where the Han dynasty in the west was eyeing and attempting to overthrow the regime with his own hands. In the midst of wind and rain, how should he, with his powerful spirit, move freely, turn danger into danger, climb high step by step, and unify the world keywords of the novel. The rise of the Marquis of Hichin No Pop-Ups, the rise of the Marquis of Hichin Complete Collection Download, the latest chapter reading of the rise of the Marquis of Hichin. Chapter 1. A Foreign Land. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 1. A Foreign Land, Two Air, We, the old bones and generations hard work, have all been entrusted to you. This is also an impossible solution. You are talented, with exceptional spiritual awareness, rare in a thousand years. We have all expected of you. If we cannot break through the golden elixir, there will be no other person in three thousand years. Master, this is the magic method of magic. Is it reliable? I always feel unreliable. Don't be distracted, little bunny. What do you want to do now? No matter what, black or white cats, catching mice is a good cat. This magical method relies on the power of sacrificing to other worlds and breaking through with force. It used to be not the right path, but for thousands of years, spiritual energy has been scarce, and spiritual treasures have been declining day by day. There is no other way to do it. I don't know what kind of extraterrestrial power we are worshipping. Not right. What situation? What a disaster. This thing is so powerful that we can't even control it. What's more, if it's not as good as it is, run. Run. Be careful. Dot. Wang Jian only remembered a sharp pain from the Dantian, and his whole body instantly lost consciousness. In the last moment, he could clearly feel that his body and pain were like a watermelon exploding in an instant, splitting into countless pieces like a strong dam on a stormy wave at the last moment, he felt a powerful force from an unknown source, so powerful that it was unimaginable and difficult to measure. In an instant, his divine soul was refined, and the golden pill condensed, but everything was only in an instant he heard his master's exclamation and the panic of his fellow masters around him there is only a patch of blood left in the world, and pain fills the whole body. The consciousness has been forcibly stripped off the body, and the bloody pain is beyond reality. In a daze, he saw a woman in red, her long skirt swaying like blood, her figure thin and unable to see her face clearly, but he could feel her deep and terrifying gaze devouring him, making him unable to move or dodge. Her power, her majesty like a bottomless abyss, is devouring his divine soul, pulling him into the bottomless darkness. Wang Jian clearly felt that his divine soul was being devoured, his body was transforming into countless fragments but unable to resist, until it completely dissipated between heaven and earth. The young master is awake, the young master is awake. Blessed by the Lord of the Mountains. In a daze, Wang Jian heard some chaotic sounds. It's rare for someone to fall off a horse so quickly and still wake up, even with the clear sky above. A female voice spoke with an indescribable disappointment. Although his head was splitting, his eyes couldn't see, and his whole body was sore, he could still feel the chaos and noise around him. I'm not dead yet. What's going on? Where is this various problems suddenly surged up in his mind, almost causing him to lose consciousness again in intense pain. The Marquis is here, please make way, make way. After a chaotic scene of footsteps, the surroundings became even more chaotic. Wang Jian endured the crushing pain and the noise in his ears. He lifted his heavy tongue and tried to spit out a few words. Fuck, his mother. Shut up. Afterwards, the effect was outstanding and immediate, and the world was indeed quiet. After exhausting all his strength, 
the pain finally made him lose consciousness again. About twenty days later, Wang Jian gradually understood his situation. He successfully broke through the golden elixir, but not completely. Because only a divine soul was possessed by a useless body and had arrived in a different world, and his physical body had been destroyed. This base, wine and lust, and an empty body were unable to accommodate his powerful divine soul. The owner of the body, also known as Wang Jian, was the second son of Duke Yang of Zhao. Seven days later, if you cross this river and haven't harvested anything yet, take the road back to your mansion, suggested Wang Jian. Then he took the lead in stopping by the stream to wash away the mud for the horse, and then took a few steps upstream to pick up water and take a few sips, washing his face. In front of me was a knee-deep stream, clear and four or five steps wide. It shimmered under the noon sun, while the green water grass on the other side spread and covered the shore. In the distance, the red broad dot leaved forest swayed slightly in the wind, mixed with a hint of tender yellow. Everything was full of vitality, as if it could come to life in the blink of an eye. The three soldiers behind him remained silent, all looking at the tall man after Wang's workout. The tall man dismounted from his horse and looked across the shore, taking off the long sword from his horse's back. Young master, is your body really okay? Marquis, it's just some angry words. If you feel unwell, I'll send someone to take you back. We can go for the next search. The speaker was Wu Yi, the deputy commander of Linin Fortress, a master in his forties who was also ranked high in the entire Heian area. It's completely okay, Wang Jian waved his hand. He had a premeditated plan when going out, but he couldn't come for nothing. After coming to this world for a month, he also basically understood some general information about this world. Wu Yi did not answer immediately, but looked at the sorcerer in the team wearing a yellow robe. She was petite in stature, masked and wearing a doe. The sorcerer didn't speak out and let go, and only then did Wu Yi turn around and express his thoughts. Young master, if you don't go back, there will still be some gains from this trip. It's still far from the border of Han, you can cross the river and walk ten miles further. How about that? Wang Jian glanced at the towering Wu Yi and nodded in agreement that if the pursuit was successful, his situation would improve. However, his mind was not focused on this. He wanted to look around and see if there were any spiritual herbs or fruits to repair the weak body where his divine soul resided. The cause of this search is that eight days ago, a bandit killed someone in a village outside the Lin Yin fort. The victims were a grandfather and granddaughter of the family, and they were only being pursued now. It was also a bit late to make up for the lost. Due to the ruthless methods of the killer, the scene was extremely tragic, causing great public opinion, public outrage, and high attention. Marquis Duyang, who hated iron for not being able to turn steel into steel, was already angry at his second son for being incompetent. He hurried over to care about his son that day, but was almost killed on the spot by his severely injured son's vulgar tone. A few days ago, the second son, who had just recovered from a horse fall, was coldly sent to pursue the vicious murderer. Many people said that the Marquis was determined to punish the young master, so many people who had suffered from it applauded. But Wang Jian had a plan in his mind. The pursuit team sent three veterans, one commander and one sorcerer, which was completely different from the configuration of the pursuit team. Commander Wu Yi was already the Marquis' confidant and one of the top experts, especially a sorcerer who could only choose one out of a thousand people. His intention to protect the calf was evident. Wang Jian thought he probably wanted his son to take some credit and calm down the public's anger, otherwise he, the second young master of Wang, would really become a street mouse. Lin Yin Fort is a military fortress on the southwest border of Zhao State, belonging to the territory of Duke Duyang. This physical body was originally the second son of Marquis Duyang, also known as Wang Jian, with a reputation for being stubborn, at least well dot known among people in Heian. With the turbulence of the situation in recent years, the eldest son of Duke Duyang passed away last year, and Wang Jian's position suddenly became special and important. 
Heian County is located in the southwest of Zhao State, adjacent to the powerful Han Empire and the key border defense area. Therefore, with the death of his eldest son, many people's eyes converged because the inheritance of the title fell on his second son Wang Jian. Many people are not optimistic about him, but according to current legal principles, he should inherit the title and feudal territory. The ruling minister of Zhao has sent someone to Heian to confirm this matter. One of the greatest contributions to consolidating the feudal inheritance law is sometimes ineffective. The Tiger and Wolf Army of the Western Han Empire is watching closely, while the border defense forces of the eastern countries are on high alert and dare not act rashly, let alone think of any potential chaos, especially in the Heian region of the border defense. Many years ago, the joint forces of the eastern feudal lords and multiple countries fought back the Han army's eastward advance with the blood of a generation, causing great damage to their strength. There are folk rumors that the Great War dealt a heavy blow to the Han army, making them afraid to advance eastward. However, there are different opinions between the military and the nobility. As they crossed the stream on horseback and searched westward, the trees and leaves along the way were lush, scattered between red and green, and the fallen leaves in the forest reached their ankles. The group walked on the western main road while sending people to search and move forward with them around half a mile from the main road. Each side advanced for a period of time and contacted each other with a unique military whistle. The forest is quiet and silent, with only the chirping of insects and birds, the rustling of the wind, and the rare sunlight that can penetrate in the afternoon, without footprints or movement. The people around him didn't notice anything unusual, and as he continued to move westward, Wu Yi gradually became disappointed. When they climbed a mountain slope, they could already see the border fortress of the Han Empire in the distance, with the red and black Han dynasty military flags fluttering on the waves of light green and dark green trees. The dazzling red and black dragon flag from afar, like an instinctive fear rooted in the hearts of the eastern countries, constantly reminds everyone that they can no longer move forward. Wu Yi ordered the searchers to gather towards the main road, and according to his intentions, they were almost ready to return home. Wang Jian looked into the distance and said, It's still far away. Wu Yi shook his head and said, Young master, we can't move forward. Han people are the least rational and do not know etiquette, righteousness, integrity, and shame. Their soldiers kill people not for the sake of morality, but for the sake of profit. Wang Jian saw the contempt and fear in his eyes and curiously asked, what does it mean to only pursue profit? Their soldiers rose to the ranks through killing, rather than noble bloodline, ancestral achievements, loyalty, filial piety, and righteousness. Not loyal to the monarch, adhering to benevolence and righteousness, only discussing murder. The soldiers of the Han army indiscriminately killed innocent people, killing without merit and without shame. A morally corrupt person can also hold a high position, and the people of the country are treacherous and driven by greed. Wu Yi kept talking until he suddenly paused, as if remembering something, and glanced at the sorcerer without saying anything. Upon hearing him speak, Wang Jian's words were full of disgust and belittlement towards the Han dynasty, so he instinctively asked, there are few opponents in the Han army, right? Wu Yi's face didn't look good for a moment, but in the end, he nodded helplessly and whispered. Last February, our scouts were attacked too close to the Han dynasty border. The Han army killed three of us, and the Marquis sent envoys to negotiate. They cut off the envoy's tongue. Wang Jian, who had received higher education in later generations, understood in his heart that the power of the Han dynasty was irreversible. The eastern countries were still feudal states under the alliance of feudal states, while the Han dynasty, like the history of the earth, was already a new type of empire with a military merit system as its core. Let's take a detour, he said as he looked at the red and black dragon flag fluttering at the watchtower in the distance Wu Yi immediately ordered the searchers to gather towards the main road and prepare to go southeast to bypass the Han border for another search, but still found nothing and returned home. As people and horses continue to gather, the originally narrow avenue becomes somewhat congested and no longer allows for parallel traffic. At this moment, the masked sorceress suddenly said, 
take you to the back. Wang Jian glanced sideways, although he did not specify his name, he judged from his gaze that the words were meant for him. Feeling upset in my heart, I don't know what you're trying to say even after you say half of it, right? But he didn't curse out loud, at least their intention was good, to protect his safety. And it elucidates an irrefutable fact especially for sorcerers who are chosen by the so. Called Supreme Qing, in their eyes, ordinary people are considered useless. In addition, with the reputation of Duke Duyang's second son as a foundation over the years, Wang Jian is really a waste breathing now, and not breathing is a dead waste I can only reluctantly let go and think to myself that one day my cultivation will recover, so that you can see what it means to be powerful. Warlock, can there be anything remarkable? As they continued to move forward, the wind slowly brushed by, and the leaves rustled, instantly as if they had come back to life. The smell of thick decaying leaves in the forest makes it difficult to breathe the wind in the forest was flowing, and Wang Jianmin's sharp spiritual awareness became alert. He felt an abnormality in the spiritual energy around him. As the shade becomes denser, the chirping of birds gradually quiets down. Although there are still no footprints, the flow of spiritual energy around becomes more chaotic. The spiritual power of those who cannot be seen or touched by others, but are particularly clear in the spiritual consciousness of the cultivators in his golden core realm, flows in the forest around him, like a peaceful lake surface stirred by something, with messy ripples still lingering. The spiritual energy of this world is a hundred times stronger than that of the earth, and he can also perceive it to be more delicate. What has come in the forest, Wang Jian thought to himself. Quickly, his divine sense sensed something slowly moving in the forest a few dozen steps away, with a large volume that was not like an animal, stirring up spiritual energy. He immediately spoke up to remind him, be careful, there may be someone ahead. Everyone turned around and looked at him with confusion. The sorcerer also looked over and couldn't help but frown. His pretty eyes narrowed and he said, don't talk nonsense. I don't expect you to be of much use, at least don't help. Follow me and I will keep my promise to protect you Wang Jianbai glanced at her and said, the dog bit LV Dongbin. Believe it or not, it's up to you. The body has quickly dismounted and retreated behind the crowd to avoid. If there is an ambush, the high dot altitude target on the horses back in the forest is definitely the best to attack. Wang Jian thought to himself that it would be better to let them serve as a shield, as a friend of the dead will not die of the poor. He has a strong divine sense, but his physical body is ultimately fragile and he doesn't want to die again. Seeing his actions like this, the disdain in the sorceress's eyes could no longer be concealed. But after only a while, it turned into surprise and panic, end of this chapter. Chapter 2 Unusual Enemies You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 2 Unusual Enemies In the darkness of the trees, a sudden howl came, and arrows that were almost indistinct flew straight towards the unprepared sorcerer on the horse's back. Wang Jian, who was already prepared, kicked the sorcerer's horse from behind in advance. The horse was startled and ran forward. With a sound of a string, it exploded in the dark forest. Arrows between lightning and flints rubbed against the sorcerer's shoulder and plunged into the shade of the forest behind him, disappearing into the darkness in an instant. In an instant, everyone had not yet realized what had happened until the sorcerer's horse was startled and took a few steps, throwing her into the pile of fallen leaves. Several soldiers finally understood and showed their weapons, searching for the enemy. Two figures appeared on both sides of the main road over thirty steps ahead, and they also looked at Wang Jian, who was kicking his horse in surprise. After regaining his senses, the battle immediately began. Wu Yi's long sword was unsheathed from his waist, and he walked briskly. With just a few big steps, he pulled himself in front of the two of them, without giving them another chance to shoot arrows. The enemy on the right side dropped their short bow and replaced it with a curved sword to deal with it. Among the group, Wu Yi wore the least armor and only wore soft leather armor with shoulder protectors to protect his torso. It was made of high-dot-quality rhino leather and showcased his lightweight advantage. 
The armor of the three soldiers at the back is complete, made of cowhide and sheepskin, painted with large paint, resin, and their defense is better and heavier. They fell behind a few steps and leaned up on both sides of Wu Yi's left and right sides, holding nearly one foot long spears in tacit agreement and pushing forward with a distance advantage, preparing to strike left and right. The other person, however, did not look like any bandit at all. They were actually wearing hard leather armor that covered their bodies, with a shiny surface, clearly carefully cared for with animal fat. At the same time, he demonstrated impressive combat experience and skills. Faced with a situation where the enemy was outnumbered, he did not panic. He took a few steps back and leaned against a big tree to protect the blind spot behind him. Then, he confronted each other back to back, left and right. Neither side made any slight moves at the first moment until the soldiers on the left, occupying a large number of people, stepped on their arches and began to use their spears to push forward and test, they suddenly thrust forward, but were quickly pushed away by the opponent's sharp eyes and hands. At the same time, the soldier on the right also cooperated and suddenly launched a challenge. The spear suddenly thrust towards the enemy's waist and abdomen, and the enemy on the right reacted beyond the normal person's grasp. Without hesitation, the soldier pulled his hands outwards with great force. Due to the lever, the opponent could not hold it at this moment, and with a swipe from the tip of the spear, their palms would become useless. However, the soldier soon realized that the situation was not right. The other party seemed to be not afraid of injury or pain at all. They held on to the spear head tightly, even if their palms were crushed, they wouldn't let go. The right hand curved knife struck fiercely with the momentum. Bang! With a dull and piercing metallic roar, sparks flashed, and Wu Yi's long sword blocked it. With a twist of his wrist, the sword's light flowed like flowing water and was sent into the enemy's chest. The other person dodged sideways, but it was too late. The left forearm was stabbed with a sword, only skin and flesh connected, and the palm swayed and hung on the arm. But that person didn't even snort. It seems like his palm is not his the soldier who regained his life was sweating profusely, looking in fear at the two enemies in the opposite tree shade who couldn't see clearly. His spear trembled slightly. Are these two guys not afraid of pain or death? Is it a person? Both sides became cautious, breathing heavily. After a brief confrontation, they dared not underestimate the enemy. After a few steps of confrontation, even Wu Yi dared not advance lightly. The enemy on the opposite side is too strange, too inhuman, unseen and unheard of. Just as the battle was deadlocked, Wang Jian felt an unusual wave of spiritual power. The reason why he is said to be extraordinary is that he cannot feel any other deity, but he can clearly feel the convergence and change of spiritual power, which is like a castle in the air, making it impossible for a cultivator to understand. What is the situation? Time passed for a while, and the dim spiritual energy began to move near two enemies in the distance. Before they could react, the two of them lost their balance and stumbled because the soil under their feet suddenly became soft, making them stand unsteadily. Awakening Technique The sorcerer's voice echoed behind him. In the battle of life and death, this stumbling imbalance was extremely deadly. The soldiers on both sides seized the opportunity to strike and skillfully pierced the enemy with spears. Then, they used their hands to nail them to the old tree, preventing them from struggling to the brink of death. Wang Jian turned around and found that it was the yellow warlock behind him, covered in fallen leaves, who had taken action. She was muttering words and waving a wooden sword in her hand, like a godmother who was making things. He had never heard or seen such a situation before, and every ten or so steps, a piece of soil in the distance became softer. What kind of power is this? He really doesn't understand being a cultivator. The female sorcerer had just fallen into a pile of fallen leaves and was very embarrassed, but with just one move, she instantly solved two strong enemies. The three soldiers facing each other in the front stabbed their spears several times, and only breathed a sigh of relief after confirming the enemy's death. 
they turned around and bowed their hands to thank the yellow warlock. You've delayed enough time, otherwise I'll be at a loss, the sorcerer nodded slightly, and she also breathed a sigh of relief. While breathing and relaxing, the group also felt lingering palpitations. The enemy came prepared and experienced, and they set up an ambush in advance, possibly because they had discovered their tracks early. Afterwards, using the dim forest cover, he attempted to use a deadly arrow to preemptively eliminate the most threatening sorcerer. The ambush was very precise and sudden, almost successful. But the second son of Duke Duyang, who was considered the most useless by everyone, kicked the horse away and ambushed it, causing the sorcerer to save his life and completely reversing the situation. Everyone was surprised by this, but unexpectedly Wang Jian became a key figure is it a coincidence, an accident, or just a crooked one? Everyone looked over with some surprise and hesitation, unsure of how to approach the matter for a moment. The sorcerer over there probably gave him a glare because he fell too badly just now, but felt embarrassed and avoided his gaze. After a while, he looked over and whispered, Thank you. What did you say, didn't you hear me clearly? Say it again. Wang Jian still remembers the woman who said he was useless just now. Dot. The yellow warlock turned his head and stopped speaking. Without much hesitation, everyone began to inspect and clean the battlefield, and these two thieves already had many suspicious aspects, attracting everyone's attention. The soldier who was inspecting the body over there quickly exclaimed in surprise, they are foreigners. This statement instantly caught everyone's attention. Wu Yi took a few big steps over and split open the chest armor of the two. The blue and black skin, the blood flowing from the wound, had quickly condensed into dark red and almost black, mixed with the soft soil under his feet, which had become sticky. It's an outsider, he said, aren't they stopped by the Han army to the north of Yin Mountain, exclaimed the soldier next to them, who had just come to his senses from the shock. Word of mouth has it that people from all over the world have heard rumors about aliens. They are said to be numerous, skilled in warfare and bloodthirsty, with dark and hard skin that can eat people's hearts and livers, fierce and fearless of death, and so on I also know that they have been engaged in years of bloody battles with the Han army, constantly being held back by the Han army in the bitter cold north. How could they now go south to the hinterland of Zhao? Do you know that the hinterland of Zhao is at least thousands of miles away from the territory of the northern outsiders, and they flew over? The female sorcerer also became serious. If we were to go south from the north and pass through Nyangzi Mountain, Yanling Fortress, Gaolu, Pinyin, Daizhou, and Luqing Avenue, and also pass through Jinyang, not only the Han Army Fortress, but also the great city of Zhao, they would not be able to come quietly. We must hurry back and report to Lord Marquis. Wu Yi scanned the surroundings and said cautiously, the view of this place is affected from ten steps away. I don't know if there are any remnants of them nearby. It's also possible that these two people are just their scouts. We are short of manpower, let's take the news back and consider it in the long run in the end, everyone reached a consensus, take the head back and ask the Marquis to send more reinforcements. Two soldiers went to chop off the head of a stranger, but Wang Jian's heart was filled with doubts. According to them, the alien race lives in the cold north, which should be a high-latitude area with weak solar radiation, and should not have such a deep skin color. From his knowledge of biogeography, it can be understood that this planet is not Earth, but the laws of physics remain unchanged. The closer it is to the equator, the stronger the radiation, and the more melanin the human body needs to release to resist radiation. The darker the skin color, the weaker the radiation in high-latitude areas, and the less melanin the human body releases, so there should not be such a dark skin color. According to the description, people from different regions are all in the bitter cold of the north, and their blue and black skin tones appear somewhat eerie and not in line with common sense. However, Wan Jian didn't think much because when he looked up, there were three moons hanging in the sky, two small and one large. The order and brightness of the moons are the methods people use to calculate years nowadays. This is obviously different from Earth, and many things cannot be explained and are reasonable. 
Afterwards, the group dared not stop and immediately began to retreat northward, as they did not know how many other people were heading south, whether there were any nearby reinforcements or even campsites. If they encountered a team of other people, it would be very dangerous. To deal with outsiders, it may be necessary to gather troops, rather than such small dot scale searches. End of this chapter. Chapter 3. Heung, Linin Fort. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 3 Heung, Linin Fort I thought it was just an ordinary bandit, but I didn't expect to discover such a big thing. The situation around Zhao State is not stable. To the west is the powerful Han State, and to the south are allies such as South Korea, Wei State, and Zhongshan State. Many are disloyal, while to the northwest are Lu Fan and some nomadic tribes. They occasionally raid the border and engage in local wars. Suddenly, traces of foreign races have been discovered within the territory, and the situation is even worse. No one dares to delay and must report immediately. Halfway through, Wang Jian requested to leave the team for convenience. Because he discovered many hundred-year-old green beards hanging on ancient trees in the forest, which were verdant and almost condensed with pure spiritual energy in his spiritual consciousness. In the world where spiritual energy was scarce in the past, such precious medicinal herbs would not be seen for a hundred years and would inevitably be plundered by all parties. It can be found in the mountains several miles away from the human gathering place, and no one knows its function. When Wang Jian carefully collected a bundle of green wisteria and spent half an hour returning to the team, stuffing it into the backpack on the horse's back, everyone's faces looked a bit unpleasant. Especially the female sorcerer, her impatient expression was already written on her face, and everyone didn't understand how much time she had wasted in such an urgent situation. I hope we won't work together again next time, said the yellow warlock with a strange tone. Wang Jian nodded and said, I didn't expect we would have a chance encounter. You. Get on the road immediately, Wu Ilian interjected, resolving the argument. On the following journey, six people and six horses drove back at night, covering the trees with animal fur to rest for two or three hours at night, allowing the horses to eat grass and recover their strength before immediately starting the journey. And because of the previous lesson, everyone dared not unlock their armor, so their whole bodies were sticky, with dust mixed with sweat sticking to their skin and fermenting in their armor. The smell could be imagined, even the female sorceress who had loved cleanliness all the way before was very embarrassed. Wang Qian had a lot of thoughts along the way. He didn't belong to this world, he was a genuine outsider. The mountains are difficult to cross, who is the one who mourns the loss of their way, meeting by chance, we are all guests from a foreign land. He can sense the wind and grass within a radius of over a hundred steps, which is the ability that gives him the greatest sense of security at present. The only thing he can be certain of is that the mass of this planet is larger than that of Earth, and their history is partially similar to what he knows. For example, there was an empire that achieved unification of most regions, and soon after, Emperor Tu died, followed by the rise of the Han Empire. However, the founding emperor of the Han Empire did not live to sixty like Liu Bang and, through multiple wars led by imperial expeditions, eradicated the feudal lords of the opposite sex and consolidated the empire's rule. Instead, he died of a relapse from old injuries after the founding of the country. The young imperial emperors were unable to control the highly accomplished opposite sex feudal lords, so over time, the land in the east gradually broke away from control under the leadership of the feudal lords. Back in the spring and autumn period and the Warring States period, there were numerous feudal lords who relied on feudal rule to maintain aristocratic politics. Many royal clans were slaughtered during the chaotic period of the early Han dynasty, and the county and military merit system of the Western Han Empire had an impact on the East, forcing many feudal lords and kings to spread feudal power out of their clans to gain more support. The difference is that due to its rich spiritual energy and abundant resources, there are also some things that Wang Jian cannot understand, just like the mysterious power displayed by sorcerers, occupying an important position on the battlefield and having a high social status. 
The rise of the scholar class was even earlier due to the division of the world and the unprecedentedly fierce competition for talents among countries. The competition for various talents such as sorcerers, strategists, scholars, warriors, and others was very severe for Wang Jian himself, the good news is that this planet has abundant spiritual energy. The bad news is that his divine body, which was originally Wang Jian, the second son of Duke Duyang, is truly pure and useless. With his qualifications, there is no possibility of cultivation his spiritual roots were chaotic, his body was weak, and he had a drunken and empty appearance, almost unable to carry his divine soul. Several times, he almost caused this body to physically crack open. So his urgent task these days is to find ways to strengthen his physical strength, otherwise he would have to keep his glasses open even when sleeping. He has already possessed a divine soul once, and if he becomes a divine soul again, he can only slowly dissipate in the world. During this period, Wang Jian came up with several methods, and cultivation was first eliminated. Here, the spiritual energy is rich, and the cultivation speed should be fast. However, his body is useless and cannot be practiced. So there is only another way left, using herbs, pills, etc. to forcibly refine the body, combined with rapid and intense exercise, perhaps it can also have some effect along the way, Wang Jian kept chatting with three soldiers in Wu Yi, which made them all somewhat flattered and suspicious. The former young master had a higher nostril than the sky, so he wouldn't say a word more to military men like them, let alone be happy and call them brothers. Wang Jianla was never tired, and along the way, he learned a lot of information from the scattered memories in his mind and the descriptions of Wu Yi and several soldiers. Many years ago, after recuperating, the Han Empire launched a large dot-scale eastward expedition, preparing to annihilate the eastern kingdoms. Halfway through the battle, the vanguard of the army had already set out to the east at Hangu Pass. When they reached the Daliang of the Song dynasty, they had already taken advantage and hastily withdrew their troops from the Han dynasty, which had already invaded the central plains. They only demanded that many eastern subjects submit to the Han Empire and pay tribute every year. According to Wu Yi, at that time, the states of Zhao, South Korea, Wei, Zheng, and Chu all sent troops to assist the state of Song. However, among the major armies of each country, only Wei, Zheng, and South Korea allied forces arrived on the battlefield and were defeated by the Han army on the banks of the Yellow River. The Chu army has not arrived yet, and the Zhao army has not arrived on the battlefield. Qi and other countries are at odds, watching from the sidelines. Zhongshan, Changsha, Nanyue, Dai country, Yan country and others have not responded, and the Han army has no obstacles at all. They still withdrew. Various countries promote heavy damage to the Han army among the people, making them afraid to advance eastward, and so on. However, Wu Yi does not think so. He believes that the Han army voluntarily withdrew. Although he hates the Han people, he also acknowledges in his words that the joint forces of Song, Wei, Zheng, and Han want to collide with the main force of the Han army, which is equivalent to using eggs to strike stones, and the possibility of winning the war is not high. Wang Jian nodded, thinking to himself that perhaps there was an internal problem with them. In the memory of the original owner Wang Jian, there was an old coach with gray hair in the Lin Yin fort who was a witness to the Great War. He had heard him say it many times, and in his description, many years ago, those Han soldiers almost made him lose consciousness he said that as the Han army marched and advanced, the Milky Way and the Milky Way landed on the hills and fields, creating a brilliant dream of the Milky Way flowing into the mortal world. It could easily crush military formations and fortified cities, and the continuous Han songs were loud and powerful. The high walls of passes and fortresses were unstoppable, and day and night reminiscing in his ears made him feel scared and unable to sleep. Many people died in weak sleep. Wang Jian felt that he had been traumatized by war and had linked some fears to the Han army. As he grew older, his memory became chaotic, or he either exaggerated the facts. The true situation may only be explained decades ago. During the two-dot-day journey on a starry night, 
apart from taking a break midway to restore the horse's strength and resting for three hours with something to eat, there was no rest along the way. By the afternoon of the next day, the dusty team had seen the westernmost important military fortress in Heian County. Linin Fort. Although it is a county, it is just a name borrowed from the Han Empire. In fact, it is completely a feudal territory established by enfiefment, and instead is called Heung Territory or Heung Marquis State, which is more appropriate. The tall castle is surrounded by dense trees, and there are large peach forests on the slopes. The pitch-black city wall is faintly visible in the milky white mist, standing at the top of the mountain, guarding the main road that leads over the hillside into the hinterland of the state of Zhao. The dense peach groves under those fortresses are also the main reason why this place is known as a shaded fortress. From a distance, the six neatly arranged city walls are nearly too zhang high, coated with lard and shining in the sunlight. The pitch-black crossbows are as thick as thighs and require a sorcerer to drive. The dragon crossbows are particularly eye-dot-catching, and can be seen clearly from a few miles away. They stand out among the lush green mountains, milky white mist, and pitch-black city walls, like a row of giant eagles landing on the wall. Looking at those behemoths, everyone will understand why this is a border defense stronghold and why sorcerers are so popular in various countries. Their own strength is enough to stand out, and many weapons can once again amplify the power of warlocks in war, making them more destructive and able to play a role of 100 when conditions are suitable on the battlefield. When arriving at the outskirts of the village, the doors of the thatched houses on both sides of the muddy road were tightly closed, and pedestrians on the road entered to avoid them like plague gods. Of course, this is mainly to avoid Wang Jian the peripheral sentry quickly discovered their group of six people, verified their identities, and immediately released them. They also sent someone to notify the defenders in the castle to open the city gate. Along the way, passing through the Taowa Town Avenue on the outskirts of the fortress, there are quite a few roads paved with gravel. Many people have already come to watch, and some have come to greet Wang Jian. They flatter him and are no longer as afraid as on the outskirts. There are also some slaves dressed in rags who are cleaning the streets and dare not look up when they crawl on the ground. Many of them are prisoners of war, and some are Tsong people bought from the south, which are private property. Wang Jian glanced at these thin and weak people and randomly averted his gaze. After quickly passing through the southern village, he saw a door wrapped in thick ceramic tiles and heavy black purple cedar wood wrapped in iron. Slowly lower as the hinges on both sides creak and elongate. Purple sandalwood and high dot quality pottery are very important strategic resources in this world, as they can block the sorcerer's spells, pottery can prevent fire attacks, and it is said that purple sandalwood can suppress sorcerers. The heavy gate bridge is lowered, and there is also a main gate inside. After passing through the dark city cave, there is a narrow street with houses on both sides that are different from the outside of the castle. All the houses have a more sturdy brick and stone structure, far stronger than the buildings on the periphery mainly made of civil engineering. Soon after, they arrived at the inner courtyard surrounded by four square towers of the castle, where numerous soldiers and gatekeepers were training. Riding, martial arts, and archery are the main training contents. The old coach with gray hair constantly shuttles through the crowd, correcting everyone's mistakes. However, some young people still disdain his correction. When they returned, the soldiers on duty had already gathered around to lead their horses. Report immediately, I have something important to see the Marquis. Wu Yi's expression was serious, and the soldiers dared not delay. They quickly climbed up the square tower in the center to report. The central tower is about ten zhang high and stands tall in the center of the courtyard on the mountaintop. The top of the tower is a two-dot story observation deck, overlooking the enemy situation within a range of dozens of miles. It is the tallest building in the Lin Yin Fort. In no time, the people above came down and asked Wu Yi to go up. He carried the head of the demon wrapped in linen, handed over his weapons, and walked up. The soldier also said, Lord Ho said, please have your esteemed guests come upstairs as well. 
The yellow warlock nodded and handed the reins to the soldier without hesitation, take care of Feishue for me. The soldier nodded quickly. Wang Jian looked at the tall tower and wanted to follow up, but was stopped by the soldier. He said somewhat hesitantly, young master, Marquis. I won't let you go up. He was very nervous and scared, his eyes dodging, probably afraid that the young master would get angry and vent his anger on them because he lost face. Such incidents have happened many times in the past. Unexpectedly, this time Wang Jian just nodded casually and said, take the horse back and have someone prepare something to eat. Then he went to his own residence. End of this chapter Chapter 4 People are more popular than people. You are listening at NovelFull.audio. The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 5 Mountain Rain Approaches You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 5 Mountain Rain Approaches As Wang Jian gradually regained consciousness, the surroundings were dim and the smell of herbs filled the air. He found himself lying on the bed in the room, with a servant waiting beside him. I'll tell the Marquis. A servant ran out excitedly. The remaining two helped him sit up, while the other brought him a rich medicinal soup. The pain all over his body had not completely dissipated, and Wang Jian felt his hands and feet were a bit sore. He said directly, No, give me some water. The young maid was in a dilemma. Don't worry, I'll say it from my dad's side. She immediately followed suit and used the carved pottery jar to fetch water. Wang Jian drank three large jars in a row before feeling thirsty. He also ate a large bowl of corn, which was not very delicious but made him wolf it down, and ran to the restroom. His clothes and bed were already soaked in sweat, while two maids kept wiping his body. Now his whole body was hungry and thirsty, and he couldn't help but eat and pull at the same time. How long do I sleep? He changed into a new outfit and asked. Two days and one night, the two maids cautiously agreed. Wang Jian moved his arm to feel fortunate that he had survived. He also felt that his body strengthening was limited, but he was fortunate enough to survive the reckless miscalculation. He didn't want to expect too much. This incident also reminded Wang Jian that in a world he didn't understand, he should be careful in everything. When he walked out of his cabin and arrived in the courtyard, the noise immediately filled his ears. He found that today's treehouse was different from before, with the sound of horse hooves and chaotic footsteps. A large number of people and horses were coming and going back and forth in the courtyard. A few soldiers wearing swords and armor passed by and saw him circling in a distance. He saw his father Wang Lai's strategist, Sun Difang, the secretary of the pen with a goatee, building a shed on the south side of the yard, placing tables, chairs, ink, and bamboo pieces, and registering soldiers one by one. What is this? Wang Jianjing was puzzled. Gather your own soldiers. A cold voice came, and Wang Jian turned around, it was his father Wang Lai. Dad, he exclaimed reluctantly. Emotionally, he was very unwilling, but reason told Wang Jian that this father must be recognized, otherwise he would be in great danger in this world. Not to mention anything else, slavery is now an official system in most countries around the world. If there is no such person found, they will be arrested and become slaves, making it difficult to move forward without any identity in trembling. Wang Lai waved his hand and sent away the personal soldiers behind him, his face very ugly. What are you doing? Wu Yi said a few good words to you, and I thought you had a vision. Even a foolish person wouldn't be like you. Wang Lai's face was very ugly. Indeed, in his eyes, his son was so foolish that he almost caused himself to die. As a father, he could really be angry to death. Wang Jian was too lazy to explain and argue. His actions were just a laughing stock for everyone, and no explanation was of any use. Just a few steps out of the room, he had already heard many people whispering in the distance, with topics such as, the Marquis's foolish son almost drowned while bathing. The air was filled with a cheerful aura. 
just quickly shifting the topic. Dad, how many soldiers do we have in our family? As soon as he said this, he didn't expect it to have the opposite effect. Wang Lai's face turned even worse, and it was a long time before he sighed and said, 804, you come with me. As he spoke, he walked towards the central tower. Wang Jian followed closely in his footsteps, layer by layer climbing up the high spiral staircase, overlooking the sunset of Tsangshan Mountain, with dense peach forests at the foot of the mountain and undulating mountains in the distance. He suddenly felt refreshed and refreshed, cleansing his lungs. He casually found a peach wood chair and sat down by the window. When he turned around, he realized that his dark-faced father had not sat down yet, and the atmosphere was a bit awkward. The father slowly exhaled, but finally didn't move and started speaking. Your mother passed away early, so that in the past, you did not practice martial arts, did not cultivate morality, and did not work much. In the past, many household affairs were taken care of by your elder brother, and I did not force you much. But now, a hint of sadness flashed through Dad's eyes. Your elder brother is gone. As a member of the Wang family, you must take responsibility. Our Wang family is not as lush as other families, so the burden on our shoulders is even heavier. Wang Jian understood what his father meant. The Wang family started off with military achievements, unlike other established aristocrats in the state of Zhao who were deeply rooted and had numerous family members who were intertwined in the state of Zhao. Recently, please be calm and don't cause trouble for me. Learn more from Secretary Sun, Wu Tongbing, Gong Tongbing, and others. In the future, the state of Zhao will also be unstable, and now we have discovered traces of strange people. Dad looked at the rolling black clouds in the distance, and his cold face couldn't hide his concern. It's going to rain. Is there any action during the Han Dynasty? Wang Jian speculated. Unexpectedly, his father was momentarily stunned when he spoke, but quickly regained his expressionless expression and said, Why do you think so? Wang Jian also didn't want to play tricks. During the previous search, he had already speculated and wanted to verify. The Han Empire was established by military achievements, and countless people hoped for military achievements to change their appearance and promote themselves. The whole country will definitely maintain a high degree of war enthusiasm and never stop fighting. Even if they lose the enemy, they will definitely look for new enemies. I don't know how those outsiders came to Zhao, but since they have all gone to Zhao, may it be because they are gradually unable to confront the Han dynasty in the north and can only start avoiding the front battlefield and looking for some side breakthroughs. If we lose the powerful enemies in the north and there are many tiger and wolf masters in China who yearn for military achievements and promotion, the most reasonable outcome would be the Han dynasty's sword pointed eastward this statement directly made veteran Wang Lai unable to hold his breath, and his originally expressionless face could no longer conceal his surprise. These words. Who taught you? Dad even stood up seriously, his eyes full of disbelief. I speculated that when I saw those two strangers, I was already thinking. Wang Jian speculated based on the history of his own world, and the Han dynasty in history was a typical militaristic empire that inherited the Qin dynasty's military merit and nobility system. In addition, the founding emperor's ancestral motto of, not meritorious but not marquee, laid the foundation, making killing enemies and establishing military achievements the only guaranteed path for the bottom to climb up. So the Han dynasty was very special, and until its downfall, the whole country maintained a high degree of war fanaticism. In the biography of Su Wu, there is a description of, South Vietnam killing Han envoys, slaughtering nine commanderies, Wan Wang killing Han envoys, north of Tu Xian, Korea killing Han envoys, immediate extermination, which refers to some events during the reign of Emperor Wu of Han. It seems that the Han dynasty always engaged in legitimate self.defense and counterattacks. In fact, it's not at all. For example, the Han envoy sent by the Han dynasty to South Vietnam had an affair with the Empress Dowager of South Vietnam when he was young. After going there, 
the two continued to engage in adultery and conspire to overthrow the South Vietnamese regime. The reason why North Korea killed the Han envoy was because the Han envoy first killed the vice king of Korea who was escorting him, and reported to the court that the general who killed North Korea pretended to have military achievements, etc. In short, they were all looking for a reason to go to war. For an empire that achieved military success, the emperor needed war, the people needed war, and only a few people did not want war. So Wang Jian quickly came to a conclusion in his mind based on the overall historical development trend. At this moment, the father finally regained his senses from the shock and looked at his familiar and unfamiliar son like a monster, with a sense of relief in his eyes. Rebel. Did you hide your foolishness before, or did you pretend to be foolish? No, or rather, I don't care much about your brothers and don't understand your background. Wang Lai's face changed from joy to sorrow, but he quickly regained his composure and said, You just understand this matter in your heart, don't tell anyone. Since you've guessed everything, I'll ask you, to be honest, do you think Xiao Guo can block the Han army? Wang Jian shook his head and said, I can't. The combat effectiveness of the armies in the feudal era and the imperial era is not at the same level, which is also a historical lesson. Perhaps the eastern countries can win some battles, but they can never win wars because they are against the current. Another unexpected answer, but Wang Lai was already numb and nodded slowly, saying, I also think so, so I made a compromise. The sorcerer Lu Yu who accompanied you that day seemed to be a member of the family, but in fact, he was a special envoy of the Han dynasty. Dad's face remained expressionless, but his eyes were filled with hesitation and melancholy. But I don't want to be someone who is not loyal to the monarch. The glory, wealth, and high positions of the Wang family are all bestowed by the monarch. Loyalty to death, going to the country in distress, and sacrificing one's country are the duties of a vassal. In recent years, I have tried my best to mediate, but in the end, I am powerless to stop the approaching mountains and rain I have a stronger premonition for my father that the situation is approaching an irreversible point. If it really does come to that day. Dad didn't say any more, as if suddenly suffering immense pain. He had to hold on to the corner of the table to stand firm and waved his hand, saying, you go down, don't be confused, make more friends with disciples, and learn from the secretary and the military commander. There is also a special envoy from the Han dynasty. Dad, no matter how you treat her, remember to please her. This is a command. After descending the high tower, the personal soldiers below have actively completed their mission, and he is not blaming his father's instructions. Subsequently, in the morning camp, the orthodox soldier Gong Xu and the deputy commander Wu Yi began to arrange garrisons. The purpose of gathering family private troops was to advance defense and prevent unexpected situations. Afterwards, the soldiers who received orders began to leave the campus one by one and rushed to various important locations around the Lanyin Fort for garrison many people are watching from afar, with moving figures on both sides of the street. Many people have anxious faces, looking around to inquire, and an atmosphere of unease permeates the air. It's not surprising that there hasn't been such a military gathering and scheduling in the Lin Yin Fort for many years, which is unsettling. End of this chapter Chapter 6 Zhao State You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 6 Zhao State Wang Jian didn't pay much attention to cheap dad's words because he had no sense of belonging to this world, only curiosity. However, at the moment, he also understood that the top priority was to protect his own safety. He could not escape this vortex. If the Han army attacked, he would not be able to protect himself in the chaos. Not to mention his physical body as a mortal, even if he were an authentic golden core cultivator, it would be difficult for him to achieve complete success among thousands of soldiers and horses. The next day, as the sun rose, the isolated trellised fortress on the mountaintop stood out as the glow of the sun shone down on the earth. Half of it was golden and half was dark, and the two small moons in the sky became blurred in the east. Secretary Sun Difong got up early in the morning and brushed his teeth with branches, looking at the sky and saying, 
the mist and moon are approaching. After yesterday's hustle and bustle, the garrison in the fortress was reduced to only one dot third of its original size, and the gatekeeper at the gate was reduced from a team of four to only one person left. Two commanding soldiers, also recognized as experts in the forest fortress, were no longer stationed in the fortress. The remaining soldiers got up early in the morning, as if nothing from yesterday had happened. They continued to joke and walk towards the school field. The personal soldiers of the nobility were professional military forces, and training and practicing martial arts was their top priority on a daily basis. Some people are discussing enduring topics such as whether it is Wu Tongbing's superb swordsmanship or Gong Tongbing's excellent marksmanship. Some people whispered the fresh joke that the young master almost drowned in a shower yesterday, and gathered in groups towards the schoolyard in the fortress. Until a certain moment, the atmosphere began to solidify, and the people in front stopped laughing. The people behind also realized something was wrong and leaned forward one after another. Then they all witnessed a scene of jaw shaking. When the second son of the Marquis, who usually idles and does not work, actually got up early in the morning, stood bareheaded on the school field, holding a long gun and practicing stabbing at the wooden stake. Even though many people have witnessed and heard it with their own eyes, this scene is still as unbelievable as a dream. The young master is dripping with sweat all over his body, obviously he has been practicing for a long time. What are you doing standing there? It's almost time, be careful with the instructor. It wasn't until the young master spoke up to remind everyone that they all came to their senses and rushed to the old instructor's position on the other end of the school field, but their skeptical gaze never stopped. Until the next day, the third day, and the, the fourth day day every day, the young master would appear on time at the school field, holding his gun and repeatedly stabbing the grass man until he was panting and sweating profusely. Only then did everyone finally believe and accept this change. The reason why Wang Jian did this is because he found that there are not many ways to enhance his body besides this method. He still uses green beard vine to enhance his body every day, but only dares to use a little, and can only rely more on exercise. Wang Jian is desperate for resuming his cultivation, and now he only hopes to enhance his physical fitness so that his divine soul can live in peace. The reason why he chose to practice marksmanship is because it is practical on the battlefield, has a good life dot saving effect, and he also knows a lot of marksmanship. In the following days, there were constant reports from scouts. Dad was always handling these matters on the tower, but their reports were clear to Wang Jian even from below. After six or seven days of scouting, the vanguard has crossed the Sentinel Ridge and is approaching the border of Hain County. Sentinel Ridge is located southwest of Heyang, where there is a village with a post station set up. It is an area where the scouts of the Lin Yin Fort rest and turn back when heading south. Messenger and business travelers from the south also rest there, hence the name. In Wang Jian's remaining memories, there was also an old willow tree surrounded by several people. Those who passed by did not want to enter the dim and low post station, and all liked to sit under the roots of the old willow tree to cool off. A day further south from there is already the boundary of Hain territory. Based on the reports from the scouts, they discovered some traces of tents and slaughtering of cattle and sheep, as well as traces of fire. However, the number of people was not large, and further investigation was needed. Based on the traces left at the scene and a small number of footprints, it was determined that if there were any remaining areas, they should be heading southeast. There is a problem with crossing the border and entering the neighboring Hain territory, which involves crossing the border. However, Hain belonged to the territory of Mu Sheng, one of the six official ministers of the state of Zhao, and the relationship between the Mu family and the Wang family was not good. Because behind the Wang family was another official, Wu Mi, the military general of Zhao and the Duke of Lishir. Initially, Wang Lai rose up as a personal commander under Wu Mi's command in the war against the northwest Lufan kingdom, and under the operation of Wu Mi, he was appointed as a marquis, gradually gaining his current position. Nowadays, outsiders are likely to be at the junction of Heian and Hain, or within the territory of Hain, and hasty searches may provoke conflicts. 
This is the drawback of feudal countries, where each party acted independently. Afterwards, Wang Jian also heard about his father's handling. Dad was very cautious. He sent someone to go north to Li Shi to inform him of the situation, so as not to make the upper army general Wu Mi suspect that they would privately contact the Mu family. He also sent someone to the capital city of Handan to inform the monarch, hoping that the monarch would coordinate this matter. Wang Jian shook his head as he listened. In this way, with round dot trip and communication between all parties, an investigation would take at least a month. If the relationship between the two parties is not handled well, there may be objections or delays, which may require more time. This is just an investigation if we really collide with the Han dynasty under the unified imperial system of the whole country, it would be like sitting naked on jade. Using eggs to strike stones. After breaking away from the Han dynasty, in order to show resistance to it, unlike the Han dynasty, and also under the influence of many old aristocratic warlords in China, the state of Zhao restored the six minister system of the spring and autumn period. Because the system of aristocratic lords governing the world during the spring and autumn period was of great benefit to local warlords and powerful forces. So the political system of the state of Zhao became a combination of military and politics, with six officials holding the court and also serving as the commander of the six armies in the country, holding the six major tiger talismans. The sixth army refers to the main and deputy upper armies, the main and deputy middle armies, and the main and deputy lower armies. The nobles default to appointing a regular general as the ruling minister to govern the court. The ruling minister changes every six years, and upon expiration, the six regular ministers jointly decide on the candidate for a new term. As for the Zhang family, who were originally conferred the title of King of Zhao by Emperor Gaozu of the Han Dynasty, the current ruler of Zhao is more like a decoration and symbol. The current situation in the state of Zhao is that officials are more important than rulers. When the intensity of war weakens and the threat of the Han dynasty decreases, centralization will inevitably be weakened, and this development becomes a natural thing. These days, Wang Jian trains with soldiers on the school field every day, improving his physical strength. At the same time, he uses his divine sense to pay attention to things on the towering tower several meters away, gaining a better understanding of the surrounding situation and the internal situation of the state of Zhao. The more I understand him, the more I understand a truth, which is that it is almost impossible to rely on the military of feudal countries like Zhao to resist the army of the Han dynasty. Whether it is execution efficiency, local cooperation ability, or military deployment, it is far inferior to the Han Empire. This gave him a deep sense of crisis and made him more aware of his father's concerns. If the Han dynasty was really preparing to move eastward, the situation would be hopeless. Wang Jian realized that if he wanted to protect himself and live a good life in the future, he had to find other ways to break through from elsewhere. What should we do? He had no choice for a moment, and with his current status, he was far from being able to influence any situation. End of this chapter. Chapter 7 The Meeting of Ma Ling You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 7 The meeting of Ma Ling for the next few days, everything will be normal, training, eating, sleeping every day, and quietly taking a bath with a green beard ting at night. The most common foods I eat are refined millet, wheat flour, chicken and lamb, as well as a lot of eggs. On the hillside behind the castle, there is an elderly grandmother who raises chickens with her granddaughter, so there are eggs to eat every day in the shaded castle. On that day, while Wang Jian was resting under the old willow tree outside the schoolyard, Shen Shi accidentally heard the report from the scouts on the high tower. They had stopped moving because they were about to enter the Hain realm. In order to avoid unnecessary disputes, the search had to be stopped. Wang Jian has also talked a lot with the soldiers in the castle these days, probably about his past actions. Now, even if he talks normally, the soldiers think he is kind and amiable, which has helped him. Many soldiers are willing to talk to him with a curious attitude. However, the old coach who spoke the most was the one with white hair and beard. 
He often said he was from Handan, and every time this happened, it would bring laughter. An elderly soldier whispered to Wang Jian that the old coach was picked up by the father of the Marquis who passed away. He said that he was from Handan but only wanted to put gold on his face. Many people mocked the old coach for this matter. However, Wang Jian himself enjoys listening to this old coach tell stories. He can tell stories about the war between the Han dynasty and the Lufan people. Some personal soldiers would enthusiastically tell him during their rest that many years ago, when Lu Fan invaded the northwest, Marquis Duyang gathered a heavy army to follow Shi Ligong's army into the northwest, severely damaging the glorious past of the Lu Fan people. It was described vividly, with eight days of pursuit for eight hundred miles, and another battle that caused the people of Lu Fan to flee and flee, capturing and beheading thousands of people, capturing and capturing more than a thousand prisoners, and so on. This is almost universally known in the Linyin Fortress, because it is the achievement of Duke Duyang. Once the soldiers mention these things, everyone's eyes shine, and they are full of admiration, able to talk to Wang Jian for a long time without stopping. He has eggs, lamb, and chicken to eat at noon. Sometimes, Wang Jian would share these things with one or two lucky soldiers around him to eat. In a few days, he noticed that many soldiers were gradually gathered around him, and many still used to secretly mock and speak ill of him. Wang Jian didn't drive them away either, thinking that he could control people by mastering resources. He would leave an egg for the old coach every day, and gradually the old coach told him a lot of past events, but in his words, there was a difference from what the soldier said. The old coach said that there was sand everywhere in the northwest. They had only been out of the stone city for a short time before entering the desert and got lost. For six or seven consecutive days, many people were lost in the desert, killing several horses to satisfy their hunger. Finally, when they were about to despair, they discovered the camp of the Lu Fan people and launched an attack. Although they were talking about a great victory in China, the old coach grinned and shook his head, saying that it was actually a camp of the Lu Fan people. Most of the people they killed were the elderly, weak, women, and children, with only a few young people. However, for Zhao Jun, it was indeed a victory. Not very honorable, Wang Jian commented, after all, he lived in an era with too many civilizations compared to today. Even though he sometimes reminds himself to accept reality, he can't help but feel emotional when facing many things. The old coach said, the victorious young master without glory. His figure was slightly hunched. To be honest, it would be annoying, young people. They have never fought against the Han army or fought against the Lufan people in the desert. I always fantasize about glorious victories the old coach's eyes were murky, as if there were thousands of words hidden inside, but none of them were spoken. Finally, I just looked at the old willow tree on the campus and said, I'm like this old guy. I've reached the age where I like it when I need it, but I don't like it when I don't need it. But whether you believe in the young master or not, the most despicable victory is better than the most glorious failure. Sure by cannot kill people, Swords Can Wang Jian agreed with his statement. You make sense. May I ask you some questions about marksmanship? The old man was flattered and immediately said, Of course, this is my honor, young master. A few days later, Wang Jian found out that the old coach's name was Jing Bo, because he was found by the well. He talked about many past events and his life's war experiences. Compared to his declining martial arts skills due to aging, those were what Wang Jian was curious about. After these days of observation, Wang Jian also found that the formations trained by the soldiers were quite simple, just basic square formations and circular formations. The ten warlocks stationed in the castle sometimes come to the school field for training. It was only then that he realized that the warlocks not only used the awakening technique he had seen Lu Yu use that day to make the ground soft, but also some highly aggressive spells. For example, a two-dot step wooden spike can grow on the ground and pierce through wooden stakes, but it takes about fifteen minutes to prepare. The training of archery is also very strict among soldiers. The Han army is good at using crossbows, which Zhao army disdains. 
they think it is a crooked way that saves technical strength. However, most people use short bows instead of large bows, which were learned from the people of Lufan. The power is good on the ground and can also be used on horseback. In the afternoon, a messenger returned from the east and walked back to the fortress through the shady path behind it, bringing the decision of the monarch. Wang Jian heard the soldier's report from afar, and the monarch was ready to personally go to Mailing City to coordinate the search for the alien, so that Heung, Hain, and their surrounding territories could cooperate and jointly handle the alien's affairs. This matter sounds somewhat unbelievable to Wang Jian. The need for the monarch to coordinate and dispatch the affairs between the two territories is simply absurd. However, considering the system of Zhao and the reality of the monarch being sidelined, I feel it is reasonable again. Firstly, the king of Zhao did not have great prestige, and secondly, precisely because of this, the king wanted to showcase himself and demonstrate his authority in such matters. In front of the dinner table at night, the candlelight was dim and the old man suddenly said, the king has sent a messenger to discuss the matter of a stranger in Mailing City. Wang Jian bit on the chicken leg and nodded, he had already known, so there was no surprise. I'm going to go in person, and the Mu family will be present then. Wang Jian looked up and said, this is too dangerous. He was not joking. Ma Ling City is the territory of Mu Sheng, the Duke of Ma Ling. When we go to someone else's territory to talk about things, there are too many tricks we can do during this time. Moreover, the other party is the six officials of the state of Zhao. If we really turn our backs, we will have fewer concerns. Not to mention such a negotiation, even the kings who were killed during the spring and autumn period were still around. Dad looked up and was slightly surprised that he could say such things. I will bring fifty guards, as well as Wu Yi and Uncle Gong. In addition, I have written a letter to request the assistance of the Wu family in Shirley City, and they will send clan members to accompany me. The Wu family is also present, they dare not do anything seeing that his father was full of confidence, Wang Jian still had some worries in his heart. It was not the father-son relationship, but the cheap old father in front of him was his biggest support. It was hard to imagine how his future would be if his father never returned. Dad, I'll go with you, Wang Jian said. He made a difficult decision and was prepared to protect his father. Although his combat power was not much different from his, his divine sense could sense the wind and grass moving hundreds of steps around, and he could detect danger in advance. No way. Dad refused without even thinking. Wang Jian understood his concerns, and his father dared to do so even though he knew there might be danger, partly because his heir stayed in the territory. Dad, didn't you ask me to learn and see more? Now that the monarch and many important figures in the country are in mailing, it's not a great opportunity. Besides, there are also people from the Wu family. What's the danger? Wang Jian persuaded. If one day I want to inherit a title and territory, I won't know anything. I don't understand anything, and it's too late to learn. I don't have the opportunity or time, he continued. This reason really shook Dad a bit. He didn't speak for a while, and the chicken on the table was steaming with mist. He gently tapped the table with two fingers holding an egg, and after a while, he said, okay, but everything depends on my arrangement. Wang Jian nodded and said, that's natural. The next day, Dad sent messengers to bring back Wu Yi and Uncle Gong, who were stationed outside, and also summoned three sorcerers early in the morning. It seems that Dad not only needs to bring personal guards and two skilled soldiers, but also plans to bring three sorcerers on this trip. Perhaps because he also wants to follow, the security level has significantly increased, end of this chapter. Chapter 8 Jixia Academy You are listening at NovelFull.audio The source has no content or has errors. Chapter 9 Guests from the North you are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 9 Guests from the North A long team of people and horses were walking on the warm-colored field covered in wild grass and shrubs, waving soil-brown flags. The main road is paved with gravel, 
and the flat land on both sides extends to the towering foot of a high mountain in the distance, forming a distinct staircase where warm, dark, and dark green intersect. A cavalry team of nearly a hundred people is not common. The leading soldiers are not tall, wearing black and brown animal skin cloaks on their shoulders, wolf head swallowing shoulder guards on their shoulders, and smooth animal fur swaying in the wind like waves. Many of their cavalry carry a short bow and long spears, making them look like an angry rooster from a distance. This kind of cavalry attire is not common, but it is well dot known in the state of Zhao. They are the Howling Wolf Cavalry, the most powerful border army in Zhao. The people of Zhao are well dot known, and Howling Wolf City is located on the most desolate northwest border of Zhao, which is the territory of Li Gong. It is responsible for guarding against nomadic tribes such as Lu Fan, Baidi, and Xiong in the northwest and fighting against them all year round. The years of war have honed the cavalry of Howling Wolf City, who have experienced countless battles and are skilled in horseback riding and archery. They are one of the most elite troops of the state of Zhao and have gradually been given a unique title by people. Rumors have it that they also have a special ceremony. Each group of soldiers who enter the Howling Wolf City must go out to hunt wild wolves and drink wolf blood. During this process, many people will die from the wolf's mouth, and the weak cannot stay in the wolf city. After the top ten Howling Wolf cavalry, there was a team of ordinary cavalry dressed in leather armor, followed by two covered carriages. In front of them was a nobleman riding a sword and dressed in splendid attire, followed by five ox carts filled with luggage, and then there was a team of forty horses, which was quite impressive. A large group of people slowly walked through the wilderness, and in the distance, a green field appeared. The wealthy man in the middle waved and called for the riders who followed nearby. The two riders arched their hands and took orders, galloping forward and backward respectively, and the team came to a stop. The man in Chinese attire, accompanied by two riders, stopped his horse under an old peach tree on the right side of the main road at the front of the queue. There were very few fruits left on the tree, and the branches and leaves rustled in the wind. Many birds were still chirping and pecking at the remnants. In front of the old tree, there was a lush green area full of vision, while behind the old tree, there was a desolate area until the end of the distant mountains, as if there were two worlds. The young man in Huafu stood under the tree, looking at the lush greenery in the south and said, Heang is indeed a good place. He is Wu Yuanheng, the eldest son of Wu Mi, Duke Shirley. After a while, the sound of horse hooves came from behind. A young man dressed in light leather armor rode over, carrying a jade inlaid sword at his waist, exuding a heroic aura. It wasn't until she spoke that she could distinguish it from a girl's voice. Father, why did you stop here? Your sixth uncle is old, let's take a break here, Wu Yuanheng explained to his daughter. He pointed to the big tree by the roadside and said, This old tree is almost fifty years old. Ordinary peach trees can't live that long. After that, it's the boundary of Heian. There were three members of the Wu family accompanying him this time, including himself, his sixth uncle Wu Jian, and his daughter Wu Ying. His daughter, who had been practicing martial arts since childhood, was very excited all the way, but she didn't know the true purpose of bringing her here. Wu Ying looked at the green mountains and waters in the south, and her eyes lit up. She couldn't help but sigh, Heang is really beautiful. General Wang Lai, the Marquis of Duyang in Heangling, was a hero who defeated the people of Lu Fan. His grandfather said he was the most skilled person in leading troops to fight in the entire Zhao country. Can I ask him for advice when he arrives? Wu Ying talked incessantly for a while, then suddenly frowned and said, But I heard his son is a playboy, which has insulted General Wang's reputation. That's their own family matter, and you can't say that when you arrive in Heang, Wu Yuanheng reminded his daughter. I've heard of this too. Unfortunately, our family is regrettable. It's natural for you to respect General Wang and be angry about him. But you are an outsider and have a close relationship with the world's closest relatives. Don't say similar things or do anything out of line in front of Duke Duyang Wuing nodded in agreement and turned to mutter softly, 
then I'll teach that useless person a lesson, isn't it considered outrageous? After resting for a while, the long queue continued to move slowly, entering the green world from a brown-yellow wasteland. Along the way, they quickly met the sentry led by Heian, who nervously verified their identity. Wu Yuanheng politely responded one by one, and the other respectfully gave way and quickly sent troops to report back. As they passed through two small villages by the roadside, they saw more than ten riders in the distance ahead of the main road. The elite howling wolf cavalry was about to stop them from approaching when they were stopped by Wu Yuanheng from behind. They are flying flags, they are the team of Marquis Duyang. As the people and horses approached, their faces gradually became clearer, and it was indeed Marquis Duyang leading his men to welcome them. Apart from Duke Duyang, the people next to him should be his son, as well as seven or eight elite cavalry wearing rhinoceros armor. The young master has come from a long distance, and if there is any inconvenience, please forgive him. Duke Duyang Wang Lai immediately arched his hand and spoke a few polite words, which were out of line with his rumors. Everywhere, Marquis Yang is polite, Wu Yuanheng arched his hands, while also noticing the tall young man who was one horse behind him. This is Wang Jian, the son of a dog. See you soon, young master. Last born Wang Jian, I have seen the young master before. The young man also arched his hand and said in a dignified manner. At a young age, but with an extraordinary and extraordinary temperament, he must be a young hero, he instinctively replied. For someone like him who has been struggling among aristocratic nobles for many years, he always says whatever he wants, not seeking sincerity, but only being infallible. The young master has praised me too much. However, the reaction of the young man across from him also surprised him a bit. He just casually replied, seemingly indifferent, and he had seen many young people. Under his routine praise, most of them either blushed and stuttered, or started boasting and talking to themselves, hoping to get along with him. He also felt like basking in spring breeze. If he met a close friend and wanted to talk to him, it was rare for him to do so. Did you see through his perfunctory behavior? How could it be that there is only a 16 or 17 year old boy in front of me? He is completely a playboy, but he also understands etiquette however, Wu Yuanheng didn't think much and quickly put this matter behind him, inviting Marquis Duyang to pay his respects to his sixth uncle. Subsequently, a group of people led their team to the Linin fortress under the guidance of Duke Duyang. Along the way, they exchanged greetings and exchanged some polite words. But his daughter Wu Ying's attention was entirely focused on Duke Duyang and his son over there. Duke Duyang was a bit surprised by why he brought his daughter here, but he didn't ask much and didn't explain much. Wang Jian followed behind his father, holding the reins of the horse, and could feel the malicious gaze behind him all the way. His divine sense had already clearly recognized who the master was, and just now Mr. Wu had introduced her, which was his daughter. However, this made Wang Jian suddenly feel that the situation had become more complex. Nowadays, the status of women is not very low. One reason is that most talented sorcerers are women, which gives women a higher status in war and thus a higher social status, the second reason is that there is no Wu Zetian here. So it is widely recognized that the eldest son inherits, but when the eldest son is not present and the order of inheritance moves forward, women also have the same inheritance rights as their uncles, in addition to their brothers. Countries such as Qi, Lu, and Wei all had queens, and the regency of empresses in other countries did not happen frequently. At this time, Wu Yuanheng brought his daughter to the Ma Ling meeting, and Wang Jian became very suspicious of his motives. It's better not to be what he guessed, Wang Jian thought to himself. It's already dangerous enough at the moment, end of this chapter. Chapter 10 I want to be a big Han's dog. You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 10 I want to be a big Han's dog The team spent two days repairing in the Linian fortress, and the kitchen had prepared twelve barrels of rice wine, thirty chickens, four sheep, more than five hundred eggs, as well as fresh vegetables and fruits bought from peripheral villages and towns, under the orders of Secretary Sun, to entertain guests from the north. 
Wang Jian also put in work and helped carry a barrel of wine from the wine cellar to the kitchen. Then he curiously went to help drive vegetables and fruits from the peripheral villages and towns, startling a group of people's chins. He is actually more curious about the rich variety of vegetables and fruits in this world. After rushing back to the fortress with a fully loaded cart, he met Wu Yi at the door, who had taken off his armor and was dressed in clean and tidy attire. He became much more handsome and almost didn't recognize him. He rode on the horse, frowning and looking a bit angry. Young master, this is a lowly task that you shouldn't do. It's nothing, I'll take a look by the way, Wang Jian said nonchalantly. Young master. Order of growth and young, distinguished by hierarchy. All right, all right. Wang Jian waved and interrupted him, this is not a big deal, I have my own judgment. Wu Yi could only nod slowly and turn around to ask the soldiers to open the door and let them in. The soldiers who followed Wang Jian happily just now were too scared to speak. After entering the castle, they headed towards the kitchen all the way and met Secretary Sun, who was dividing the camp for the soldiers from Leisure City. With the help of the young master, I saved a lot of trivial matters, and I am grateful to you, they said. After bowing their hands, as people from Jixia Academy, Sun Difan and Wu Yi had completely different attitudes towards this matter. Wang Jian has been cultivating immortals for forty or fifty years in his previous life, and has won the favor of all the elders and younger generations. He is also an old fogey. Ha ha ha, Secretary Sun is modest, and you are the mainstay of the family. You are in good order in this place. I'm just doing my best. If you need help, just tell me. I will do my best. Sun Difang's face was flushed with excitement when he was told, and he saluted excitedly, saying, Young master, you have praised me too much. These are all my responsibilities. If I can't do these things well, I dare not become the head secretary of the castle, and I feel even more guilty towards the Marquis. It is precisely because a talented person like Mr. has a well-organized family that my father has no worries. Wang Jian continued to flatter him, and his experience told him that talents like Sun Difang are rare, and there will always be no harm in good relationships. However, an old fogey like him knew that flattery should be handled freely and could not leave embarrassment to others, so he didn't give Secretary Sun a chance to say goodbye. Secretary Sun, you should be busy first, don't disturb you, and just tell me if you have anything to do. He said the order, and his feet were already smeared with oil. When Secretary Sun regained his senses from his dizzying flattery with a red light on his face and said, Young master, can you please help me, before he could finish his sentence, he realized that the person was there. No one left long ago, so we can only give up. Although he didn't give orders, Secretary Sun felt that the young master was such a good person. He used to blame him wrongly. Wang Jian wanted to rush back to his residence immediately and remember some places. He also went to the peripheral villages and towns to inquire with some hunters, medicinal gatherers, and other people. He wanted to record whether there were any special herbs on the outskirts of the Lin Yin fort, and confirm them one by one in the future. Wang Jian thought of a possibility that even if his aptitude could not be cultivated, his divine sense was still there, and his precise control ability was not comparable to others. Based on this, he also prepared all the materials, and he could definitely refine pills. However, halfway through, Wang Jian, who was preparing to return to his residence, was suddenly stopped by a short woman wearing leather armor under an old willow tree in the schoolyard. He quickly recognized Wu Ying, the daughter of Prince Wu Yuanheng, and bowed, Hello Miss Wu. In this world, Gongzi is not a casual title, it specifically refers to the son of the duke, who in the state of Zhao is the son of the six great princes. The title of prince and prince also has a strict role in distinguishing identity. For example, in the state of Zhao, only the sons of the king of Zhao can address a prince, while in the world, only the sons of the Han dynasty emperor can address a prince in this way. The other party just nodded and immediately criticized him saying, you are just Wang Jian, an ignorant and incompetent person. 
As expected, you only know how to do meaningless things. You should also compete for the work of lower class and livestock. Do you deserve the reputation of Duke Duyang? Wang Jian felt a wave of anger in his heart. Who are you and me? I'm not even familiar with you, so when I come up, I'll give you a scolding. If it weren't for his complete loss of cultivation, he would have been taken back and used as a cauldron furnace. On the surface, he was still surprised. After all, the other party was the daughter of the young master, and it was uncertain whether it was her own intention or the instruction of her elders. Miss Wu, you misunderstood me. You can't listen to others' hearsay. Everything must be seen as it is. Seeing is believing. I see you not practicing martial arts well and running to do menial work. Isn't this not a lack of dedication and ambition? Think about the great achievements of Duke Duyang, don't you feel ashamed? If I were you, I shouldn't have willingly degraded and ruined the reputation of the family. The little girl chattered eloquently at a young age and immediately gave him a big hat. However, as she gradually looked, she had not yet delved into the world, but simply received more education and could say some beautiful things. After understanding the details, Wang Jian gradually relaxed and casually responded, Miss Wu's lesson makes sense. I have learned a lot from it, and I will definitely work hard to correct it in the future. When I have free time, I will ask you for more advice, really. You look pretty good, it seems like you're not as bad as rumored. You can't imagine how bad the Lord is. Wang Jian sneered in his heart, then politely said goodbye to get rid of the little girl's entanglement, but he had already memorized it in his heart. Until he walked away, Wang Jian turned around and gave a meaningful glance at Wu Ying's back. This innocent child probably didn't even know why his father would take her south. That night, a grand banquet was held in the Lin Ying fort to welcome guests from the north. The banquet was full of wine and excitement, and the guests and hosts were delighted. They also talked about the next arrangements to go to Mailing City and the route to take. And confirm the departure time. Depart immediately for Mailing on the morning of the thirteenth day of the Misty Moon. At that time, there will be ten Howling Wolf Cavalry, two of my commanders, three sorcerers from Lin Yin Bao, five sorcerers from Li Shi Cheng, as well as two hundred cavalry from Li Shi Cheng in Lin Yin Bao, and fifty servants accompanying them. At the banquet, Gong Tongbing gave a general introduction to the situation and then sat down again. He was already quiet. I think it's feasible, Wu Yuanheng said with one stroke. On the morning of the thirteenth day of the foggy month, the large team of people set off from the Lin Yin fort on time. The flags of the Wang and Wu families stood in front of the team, and the shadow fell long under the sun. It was chaotic and intermittent in the scattered peach grove, stretching forward. The howling wolf cavalry in front attracted many people to watch from the roadside. Wang Jian sat on the horse's back, touching the flying knife in his pocket, and the dawn and dusk intersected on the distant horizon. He listened to the whispers of the people around him, but he quickly regained his divine consciousness and remained focused, which was still too tiring. However, in the team, Wang Jian suddenly discovered a special person, the female sorcerer and Han Dynasty envoy Lu Yu, who was also going to mailing. After walking for a while, he deliberately fell behind and ran parallel to Lu Yu, saying in a low voice, did the Han Dynasty also pay so much attention to the matter of Ma Ling? Upon hearing his words, Lu Yu was clearly surprised, but it was only fleeting. He then frowned slightly and said, It seems that Duke Duyang did not remember my warning. If you dare to tell a third person about my situation, you will be dead. The murderous aura in his calm words could not be concealed. Of course not, you can rest assured. Wang Jiandao, an old fogey, knows how important it is. He thought to himself that he could get close to people on this trip and quickly found a way to bring him closer to Lu Yu. The first priority for self-protection is to protect my father, and secondly, facing the complex situation, he has no confidence in his heart. He only thinks that if he can climb the largest tree of the Han dynasty to provide shade, he can quickly gather over time. I want to say, special envoy, you don't know. 
Since I was young, I have been listening to the great achievements of the Han Emperor, and I am also fascinated by the invincibility of the Han army. I have admired the Han dynasty for a long time, and it is because I am in the state of Zhao and my heart is in the Han dynasty. I want to be the dog of the Han dynasty. Yu, Lu Yu was stunned for a moment, but quickly responded with a cold face, I'm sorry, we don't want a useless dog. Wang Jian. Dot. End of this chapter.